Salutations, fellow readers, writers, and killers of time on YouTube. My name is Martha Jones, and for reasons that would take effort to explain, I have dressed as would a Martha who is all set to audition for the community theater production of How the Susan Saved Hogwatch. Which would be astounding to past tense me, because for most of my existence I have found Halloween to be way more lovable than Christmas. However, I have recently learned that not only did Halloween and Christmas have a lot more in common in the old days, featuring costumed revelers, ghost stories, and a mindfulness toward one's mortality, Historically, both of these holidays had a common enemy, and that enemy was the Puritans. Yes, those dreary dickweeds who thought that hats and buckles were complimentary goods also thought the observation of holidays like Christmas, Easter, and All Hallows Eve promoted idolatry, and they refused to celebrate such holidays because that would somehow make them better than the Catholics. A scheme that was, of course, an instant success, and no one was Catholic ever again. Nevertheless, bearing all this in mind, I would like to use the androgynous sounds of my voice to share with you a few words about a specific ghost story. And that ghost story is The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, a clever trick played on the British by an author named Washington Irving. ESC, Mr. Irving was born in New York, grew to manhood, wrote some stuff, then moved to England during an artistic and literary era known as Romanticism. If you would like a smart person explanation on what Romanticism is, feel free to check in with Pavio over on his channel, but based on what I have read, observed, and been taught over the years, I get the impression that the Romantics specialized in melodrama, then got annoyed if you didn't take it seriously enough. They disapproved strongly of satire, and if ever Americans got annexed into the movement, it was generally the ones with a long melancholic streak, the likes of Hawthorne and Poe. So, near as I can figure, Irving's contemporaries over in England saw in The Legend of Sleepy Hollow a couple of kick-ass ghost stories and went dibs before processing that the majority of the story was satire. The worthy pedagogue was described as a most unusual man. To see him striding along... One might well mistake him for some scarecrow eloped from a cornfield. Truth to say, Ichabod was a conscientious man. Never bore in mind the golden maxim, spare the rod and spoil the child. Still, he was careful to administer justice with discrimination. Well, there you go, folks. Schoolmaster Crane beats the children, of course, but not to excess. Eddie's desperately in love with Katrina, his father's money. If by chance you grew up with the Disney version of the Sleepy Hollow legend and ever wondered how faithfully it recreated the book, it is faithful enough that you could probably get away with writing a book report on the movie and not have read the book. The largest deviation I can point to is that Ichabod is too likable, if not the hero. In the book, Mr. Irving writes Schoolmaster Crane as would a long-suffering breadwinner who is sick of his freeloading brother-in-law and getting revenge by writing him into a story. Because Ichabod Crane is a conman who convinces people he is an intellectual so he can beguile folks out of money for the schoolhouse that he never gets around to repairing. But the only book he has apparently read cover to cover is History of New England Witchcraft by Cotton Mather. You know, one of the nice men who is credited with laying the intellectual groundwork for the Salem Trials. A casual inclusion that makes me wonder, are we supposed to hate this guy? Because I'm pretty sure we're supposed to hate this guy and be overjoyed when the horseman comes after him. Even the name Mr. Irving chose for his protagonist is somewhat telling. Ichabod is technically a biblical name, and while it is not as notorious as, say, Herod or Ahab, the biblical Ichabod was born at the same time as Israel lost the Ark of the Covenant. When his mother heard about the lost Ark, she gave her newborn a name that means without honor or unimpressive. And I get that it's not my place to make a wisecrack about Jewish mamas and guilt, but I am. Some facets of the Sleepy Hollow story get reflected by other adaptations in ways that range from the not what I would have done, but okay, to what the hell were you thinking, Mr. Director Man? In Tim Burton's 1999 adaptation entitled Sleepy Hollow, the filmmaker takes the brief backstory that Mr. Irving gives to the horseman as a Hessian mercenary from the Revolutionary War and makes it more, shall we say, Burton-esque. The Headless Horseman is one of several ghost stories that is told in the context of the Sleepy Hollow legend. And there really is a spooky old tree in one of those other ghost stories where a traitor had been hanged, but in the book it was a tulip tree. Really? That's the scariest hanging tree you could think of, Mr. Irving? Who knows, maybe this particular tulip tree had actual lips. Also in this version, there are multiple nods to witchcraft as a locus of Puritan anxiety, but the witches are portrayed as far more sympathetic than their persecutors, which is a change I personally appreciate. Which is all very well, but the first time I saw the movie, it was in theaters with my dad. And at the time, I remember him saying in casual conversation, would it have killed you, Monsieur Director, to make Schoolmaster Crane the cover story for Constable Crane while he is doing his investigation in Sleepy Hollow? which led to my feeling cheated by this movie for 20 years, because that would have been awesome. I mean, just look at late 90s era Johnny Depp here, and picture him awkwarding and befuddling his way through a lesson plan in a one-room schoolhouse with a bunch of grade school hecklers, and tell me that wouldn't have made good cinema. I dare ya. I mean, we could try. We would argue and you would lose. On the what-the-hell-were-you-thinking-Mr. Director-man side of questionable adaptations, 
There's this hideous silent film from 1922 entitled The Headless Horseman, in which the pacing is awful, Ichabod is still too likable, probably because he's played by Will Rogers, and every problematic call the filmmakers could make, they did make. For example, in the book, Brom Bones is described as a Herculean man's man and overall endearing. But in trying to establish this, Mr. Irving writes that Brom is foremost at all races and cockfights. Teehee. In The Headless Horseman, they actually stage a cockfight? This animal cruelty was fun, cool, and hip in 1922. Despite being born and raised in the historically abolitionist state of New York, Mr. Irving casually drops this word, seemingly interchangeably with servant, but in the movie they lean into that really hard and choose to make all the Van Tassel servants persons of color. Which I think is uncomfortable in and of itself, but those who would be inclined to encourage discussions about whether bad representation or no representation is better can't even have that discussion here, really, because the persons of color aren't treated like characters, they're treated like scenery, one of many status symbols in the Van Tassel estate. I mean, truly, what is there to say except blech? And if that weren't enough, they add a scene that goes nowhere and in no way reflects the book, in which they turn Brom Bones from a trickster and a vandal into a sadistic monster by having him pay some kid to say that Schoolmaster Crane bewitched him, for which the Sleepy Hollow inhabitants can think of no more reasonable punishment than the application of tar and feathers. Ichabod gets out of it and Brom is proved to be at fault, but not before the filmmakers opt to show you a graphic depiction of what Ichabod believes will presently happen to him at the hands of the Sleepy Hollow boys. And Brom Bones still gets the girl at the end because everyone in Sleepy Hollow is a terrible person. Just... you... You know how I occasionally feel compelled to remind people that old is not necessarily equivalent to good? This is one of those things that is both old and not good. If anyone offers you the opportunity to view this particular movie, I would recommend declining politely. This is a decidedly one of those I watched the movie so you don't have to kind of situations. Hear me? So if pressed, I would say that the book version and the Disney version are the most worthwhile versions I know of, the Burton film is enjoyable in its own way, and the 1922 film is not fit for man or beast. At best a reminder that a remake is not the worst thing you can do to a movie. Usually. Sometimes. Anyway, kudos to Washington Irving for ingratiating himself with his peers in England, thereby weaseling his way into his status as a romantic, and for giving me a plausible excuse to talk about ghost stories at Christmas. Especially since, in the original text, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow never mentions Halloween. This could totally be one of those stories traditionally told at Halloween or Christmas, had the Victorians gotten their way over the Puritans. Incidentally, smarter people than I am have speculated why Washington Irving would write such an unflattering portrait of Ichabod Crane, and mused that that portrait might in fact be a self-insert. That perhaps in Irving's own travels and vocations, he too felt like a con man, as he passed himself off as an author, lawyer, historian, and romantic. AKA the worst kind of people. Lest we think that authors thinking they are imposters is something new. As always, thank you for giving these videos a shot. I post whenever I can. I have no idea which sources I'm going to end up citing in the description, but you have my word such as it is, I will do my best to show my work at least as well as I did in freshman algebra. In the meantime, take it easy. Love you. Bye. Like my channel, buy my crap. Do da, do da. There's no time to take a nap. Oh, the do da day. Hey! From my family to yours, happy Hogswatch, and there's no such thing as the bogeyman, as far as your grown-ups know.